to Pastor Mitchell, the shepherd that God had placed over his pulpit and this church. I want to say thank him for letting me have another opportunity to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. To Reverend Lee, in his absence, getting some rest because he has done a great work filling in while Pastor has been gone. Amen. To my co-laborers, the ministerial staff here at Mount Zion First Baptist Church. But it's something that means a lot to me this morning. You might have seen me come out the pulpit and hug this young man here because we have spent a lot of time together in the Taurus unit, but he was in the Taurus unit for quite a long time. And we are talking about over 15 calendar years. And God have blessed him, and here Scott and, and his wife, Scott have traveled with me for years doing prison ministry. And as I stand here right now and I look at Andy, I told you one day, I told you one day, I told you one day you would be sitting, looking at me. I trust God, Andy. And I'd like to recognize my wife, Lynette, who Andy know because she traveled to that prison a lot of days with me. Would you pray with me? Oh God, we thank you for the spirit that you have brought down through this choir in here this morning. Lord, we know that you are God and you're going to stand in your house. We know that you're going to bring order when there's disorder. But I'm asking you right now to touch us and open our mind, decrease us, and increase yourself. For we can all be on one accord and to hear what you have for us to hear from you today. Lord, please bridle my tongue and let a word not come from my mouth out of all you. Decrease me and increase yourself. Lord, we love you. Speak to us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Our scripture reading, for those who could stand, please stand for the ones who can't. God will let you stand one day in front of him. Our scripture reading will be coming from the 121st Psalm. And it was mighty strange how the choir played that and I didn't ask him but thank you Jesus <laughs> and the words of the Lord reads I lift up my eyes to the hills where does my help come from my help come from the Lord the maker of heaven and earth he will not let your foot slip he who watches over you will not slumber indeed he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep the Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going both now and forevermore. And the title that the Lord have placed on his sermon, What Are You Afraid Of? You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Psalms, the, hundred and, the 19th book of the Bible of the Old Testament, the 19th book of the Bible of the Old Testament. The purpose of this book of the Bible, breath by God, I want y'all to hear me. The purpose of this book is to provide praise, worship, and confession to God. Urshas, you may be seated. To provide praise, worship, and confession to God. Y'all gonna talk back to me if you can. David is the author of most of the songs. David wrote 73 of the songs, 51 of the songs that's considered anonymous. But we have Asaph, we have Corinth, we have Solomon, we have Ethan, we have Moses, who also contributed to writing the songs. But most of the songs are centered around the flight of David from Saul and of the sins that David committed with Bathsheba. The Psalms are praises to God as our creator, our sustainer, and redeemer. The Psalms help us divine praise as recognizing, appreciating, and expressing God's greatness. Y'all gonna talk back to me? Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Now in the text of the 121st Psalm, it shows 
that God has all power and he's always acts in the right time. He has all power and he always acts in the right time. The text shows that God is sovereign over every situation. God's power is shown by the ways in the text where he reveals himself in creation, history, and in his word. Now, the 121st Psalm, it shows us the more we know God, the more we can appreciate God for what he does for us. God can help us when we feel distressed. God can overcome all of our problems. We just have to trust in the Lord. Again, the title that the Lord placed on his sermon is What Are You Afraid Of? Now, we know in the 121st Psalm, some says that this is one of those anonymous psalms. Some theologians believe that Hezekiah wrote the 121st Psalm. But a lot of the theologians, they have determined that they feel that David wrote this due to everything that he's done. Now, we're talking about David, Jesse's son. David, the shepherd boy. David, who killed Goliath. We're talking about David, where the women sang the song, Saul killed 1,000, David killed 10,000. We're talking about David, who fled from Saul. We're talking about David, who was made king. We're talking about David, who committed sin with Bathsheba. We're talking about David, who sent Uriah to the front line to be killed. We're talking about David, the man after God's own heart. We understand that we are talking about David here. I truly believe it because he said, I lift my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He had to lift his eyes because he had to look back at everything that he had been through. But I'm going to bring this thing into 2015 right now. Okay? And now when I, when I looked at this text, the 121st song, it took my mind back to Birmingham, Alabama. When those times when husbands and wives would get laid off because anyone from that area know they have a lot of steel plants, coal mines, places where they have plants where they make fence. And when those old men and those old women used to get laid off, and I was about nine years old, and, and they would be standing in those long lines waiting on that government cheese and, and, and rice and canned goods would have those white labels on it. They didn't say Del Monte. They had to stand there because at those times they had paper food stamps. They didn't have a long star card. And they would stand in those lines and get those commodities because those men were laid off. Back in those days, they didn't call it unemployment. They called it penance, where they would go get their penance. And I could hear the older saint standing up there, the seasoned saint, Ethel Culpepper. I could hear her say, I've been traveling with the Lord a long time. And I know he's going to see about me. I lift my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? Y'all going to pray with me? If you're sitting there right now, and you can look back over your life, and you know you've been through all kind of turmoil, you know it was times when you was laid off, you know it was times that you could have had back problems, you didn't have a job for six months, but the repossessed man didn't come pick up the car, they didn't foreclose on the house, I lift my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? 2015, let's stop for a minute. When we start going through problems in our homes, our marriages, our relationships, our finances, our health problems that enter our body, the first thing this song is talking about is that we should do nothing but depend on the Lord. But instead, instead, we run to man or woman. Problems in our homes, y'all better hear me. We start to discuss them with church members and coworkers. Problems in our marriages or relationships. Separation, divorce. We go get an outside woman or an outside man to fill that void. Our finance problems. We run straight to speedy cash and get us a payday loan. Instead of getting out of debt, we go deeper into debt. When health problems enter our body, we let the doctor convince us to take 10 pills a day, killing us at the same time. He should heal us. Y'all gonna talk back to me, ain't you? 
Y'all talk back to me if you can. Now, come walk with me through the Bible in the book of Hebrew, uh, excuse me, in the book of Proverbs. Walk with me. Chapter 3, verse 5 through 8. Walk with me, Andy. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. I wish I had about five or six more Bible readers. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear God and shun evil. This will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. Am I right about it? Now in this 121st Psalms, it is letting us know that God not only made the hills, God made the heavens and the earth. Now, the main thing that I want to do, I want you to realize one thing. I'm going to give you three points and we're going to leave. Assurance and hope. Assurance and hope. Note takers, I lift my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He told you, then he asked the question, and then he answered the question. When those old people were standing in those lines, they had assurance and they had hope because they had been laid off before. They had went through all kinds of situations. A lot of things had taken place in their life. Now as I look back at this thing, and I really look at where it says, do not be wise in your own eyes. I want you to think about that and ask yourself, have you always lift your eyes to the hills where your help came from? Now, we know that you should never trust anything lesser than God. Now, I know you say, well, Reverend, what you mean lesser than God? That mean The View? That mean Oprah? That mean Dr. Phil? That mean The Real? That means mama, daddy, sister, brother, auntie, auntie. All of those are considered a lesser power. Anything that don't know the number of hairs on your head is a lesser power. Anything that cannot stop water from coming on land is a lesser power. Anything that do not make the sun rise and the sun set, that's a lesser power. I do not advise you to depend on it. Man will leave you. Woman will leave you. If he didn't put you in a deep sleep last night and woke you up this morning on time, that's a lesser power. Point two, note takers. Safe only with God. In verse three and four in the 121st song, it says, he will not let your foot slip, he who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. That's good news right there. We have a God that don't take naps. We have a God that don't look at his phone and say, no, I don't want to talk right now. We have a God that don't own an answer machine. We have a God that don't send text messages. We have a God that we can just look straight up and call and he can just distinguish our voice out of all of us. We have a God that don't sleep. Now, I'm gonna take you into something and I want you to realize why I said you can't trust man. Now, walk with me through the, through the Bible of Matthew. Come go with me, Andy. Chapter 26, verses 38 through 40. Then Jesus said to them, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death Stay here with me and keep watch with me. I wish I had one more Bible reader. Going a little farther, Jesus fell to the ground and prayed, My Father, if it's possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. Watch this, verse 40. Jesus returned to the disciples and found them sleeping. They fell asleep.
purposefully on the one that they seen turn water into wine. They fell asleep on the one that they seen feed 5,000 between women and also women and children with two fish and five loaves. They fell asleep on the man who they watched heal the man at the pool of Bethesda who he told, take your bed and get up and walk. They fell asleep on the man who brought Lazarus from the grave after four days. They fell asleep on the man that they seen bring over to the Zizzarines and remove demons from legions. They fell asleep on the man that they seen go on to the house to deliver Jairus' daughter back to life. Now if they fell asleep on him, what man will do to you? Now, now, sisters of God, don't get mad with me. But when they say men in this Bible, it also means women. Now, I'm going to prove it to you because y'all know I like to read this Bible. Genesis chapter 5, it says, this is the written account of Adam's line. When God created man, he made him in the likeness of God. He created them, male and female, and blessed them. And when they were created, he called them man. Am I right about it? Yeah. They fell asleep. Yeah, I'm right about it. Eight years of Bible discovery, 18 years in the brotherhood. I know I'm right about it. They fell asleep. I lift my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help come from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. When you really think about it, and you really want to be truthful to yourself, all you got to do is just feel yourself. All you got to do is look back at when you were 15. All you got to do and think about that car where you had to have when you had to have jumper cables. Y'all missing it? I lift my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help come from the Lord. Somebody here know what I'm talking about. Point three, and I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let you go. Point three. Total faith. A lot of us say. We have it. Came up here this morning and prayed. Left it at the altar. But I guarantee you, God telling some of y'all, y'all went right back to that seat and picked it right back up. That bill still need paying on Monday. And you ain't got the money right now. I lift my eyes to the hills. Where your help gonna come from? You going back to speedy cash? Let's be real in here. Point three, total faith. In Psalms 121st Psalm, verses 5 through 8. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm, and he will watch over you your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going both now and forevermore. It's two ladies that I know you're going to relate to. It was the lady with the issue of blood who as she had heard that he had got in the boat and come across to the Jezreelites. She had heard what he had did for Lazarus. Legion, excuse me. He had heard what he had done for legions. Send demons into pigs and closed him in his right mind. She had heard this, and she had also heard that the synagogue leader, Jairus, Jesus was with him on his way to his house to heal his daughter. Now, I want you to picture this. As she had heard these things, she had been dealing with a situation a long time. A situation that put her on the outskirts of town where the unclean had to live. 
But she stood there and she knew that Jesus was on his way. She had the faith, she had total faith that if I could just touch the hem of his garment. Now you got to realize she had to, she had to risk everything she had because in those days you could not just come into town unclean. She had to risk everything. So they said she pressed her way. She didn't go to Speedy Cash. She prayed and she pressed her way. She trusted God. What are you afraid of? She went through the crowd, and as I preached this before, a theologian said, reverends, that her eyes was closed, that she was swelled up. They had beat her. They had stumped her. Life do you like that sometimes. But she pressed her way because she had total faith. I had heard this happen up there. I heard that he's on the way to do it again. So now let me get my chance. She didn't say, well, now Jesus is going by. He's going to Lazarus' house. Uh, Jairus house. He's going to Jairus' house. Uh, maybe he might stop by here on the way back. But I want to ask y'all a question. I need some Bible readers on this question. How many times, Reverend Lattimore, how many times that you know when Jesus entered a village and Jesus preached the gospel and Jesus said, come follow me. How many times any of you have read this Bible scene where he turned around and said, let me see how many I got. He didn't turn around. He kept going. He says, follow me. And if you're following Jesus anywhere, you don't have to be scared. Just keep pressing. Put the things behind you and keep pressing. Then you got to have the faith of another lady named Mary, who God came down and planted himself in her. She had to have that kind of faith because she had to realize she was getting betrothed and married to Joseph. She knows she was risking everything. A lot of you women these days, if that would have happened to you, ain't no way you would have went home, Sister Tennessee, and told Deacon Tennessee, hey, I got a baby. <laughs> and then he actually said, what happened? You said, well, the Holy Spirit. <laughs> no, that, 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 just be for real. She trusted that. She had faith in him. She had faith where she carried him for nine months. She had faith when she had him in the manger. She had faith when he was at 12 years old that he went to the temple when they went to the feast of Jerusalem and that he got lost and he came back. She knew he was going to tell her, I was about my father's business. She knew at 30 years old that John the Baptist was going to baptize him. She knew he was going to be carried in the wilderness and tested for 40 days. She knew he was going to go to Galgotha Hill. She knew she was going to have to stand there. But guess what? She trusted God. Total trust. Good, good, good. We ain't talking about halfway trust. Andy, them 20 some years, you had to trust him. Totally. Then he sent a man four years ago. And we trusted him. This is what happens when you trust God. This is what happens when you trust God. You told me, say, Reverend, I don't think I'm going to get out of here. I told you, I said, you're getting out of here. I said, you're going to come to Mount Zion, and you're going to see me preach this word. Yeah. I lift my eyes to the hills, Andy. Yeah. I don't know nobody else. I can't tell you where they're at, but I keep my trust in the Lord. What you're going through, Scott, I keep my trust in the Lord. I don't need nobody telling me that this is what you need to do, that what you need to do. This 66 books that we carry to penitentiary to penitentiary, this is what we listen to. This is what we listen to. Well, I'm going to my seat, Brother Foster. Am I on time? But the Lord, he always wants to know, do you believe that the Lord will keep you from all harm? Y'all going to help me close this, ain't you? Do you believe that the Lord will watch over your coming 
and you're going. Both now and forevermore. But he have some questions, Andy. He would like to know if it was the Lord who gave you life this morning, if it was the Lord that gave you health and strength, if it was the Lord who clothed you in your right mind, if it was the Lord who put food on your table, if it was the Lord who paid all of your bills, if it was the Lord who delivers sickness from your body, if it was the Lord who removed all kind of trouble, if it was the Lord who brought a marriage back together, if it was the Lord who took crack out the crackhead, if it was the Lord who opened the prison doors, if it was the Lord who told Warden Wilson to let us do it, if it was the Lord, if it was the Lord, if it was the Lord. Who else should we lift our eyes to? If it was the Lord, if it was the Lord, if it was the Lord, did you thank the Lord for giving you life this morning? Did you thank the Lord for giving you health and strength? Did you thank the Lord for clothing you in your right mind? Did you thank the Lord for putting food on your table? Did you thank the Lord for paying all of your bills? Did you thank the Lord for removing sickness out of your body? Did you thank the Lord for closing that prison door? Did you thank the Lord for bringing health back to your body? Did you thank the Lord for everything that you have? Did you thank the Lord? Have you thanked the Lord? Why don't you thank the Lord? God sees, God knows, and God hears everything. The doors of the church are now open. Did you thank the Lord? Why don't you thank the Lord? When it boils down, have you thank? <laughs> oh God! The doors of the church are now open. <laughs>